Hello everybody and welcome. I am Johnny and I have a friend with me tonight. Everybody yes, say sir. hello to the Mr. Doja, also known in some circles as Kid of the Dawn. How's it going, buddy? Yes, yes, it's good, man. I'm happy to be here with you, my friend. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. So, uh, I've brought I've brought him along tonight because uh, he is very clued in and is a very big fan of tonight's topic, which is uh, Star Wars. Who could have imagined? <laughs> but uh, the reason I, I gathered this little council together is specifically over a recent rumor. And I cannot stress that enough in that being a rumor. No confirmations, no insider knowledge, purely a rumor. And uh, the rumor in question is that Zenimax, which is the uh, parent company of Bethesda, is said to be making a Mandalorian MMO. And uh, well, let's just get into it. What do you think about that? Do you, do you think that is a good idea? I, well, let's put it this way. To do it this quick after we just got a few seasons, I think is um, not a good move. Uh, the reason why I said that is because you have people that's tied into and invested into the series and the character. To add a video game to it is like they do with every video, I mean, uh, cartoon movie or popular cartoon that comes out. They make a video game for it. People expect it to be like the show or the movie. And then when it's not, it gets crapped on and then it's shelved like the et game so i don't think it's a good idea to do it this soon um if they have plans on doing it it would be honestly i feel it'd be better to add uh content or you know skins or whatnot to popular games that's already out to get people used to seeing the mandalorian in the game i think that would be a good look um avoiding fortnite because I think it'd be campy to put it in that game. Um, I think it would be cool to throw it in Battlefront, you know, to update that game. I think it'd be cool to throw it into the next installment of the Jedi Order. Um, oh, yeah. I think, oh, the Fallen, uh, what is it? Uh, Fallen, Fallen Order? Order, yeah. What's the name of the game? Yeah, I think it'd be cool to add him into there in some aspect, but just to give him his own starring game, I don't think it'd be a good move. Okay, so. I think it's too simple. I think it's too something. No, of course. Uh, that, that does make sense and a very valid opinion. Um, from what I've gathered, uh, the Mando has made video game appearances in the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which is a game I play. Uh, he is featured as a... He has two characters. It's like a hero collector game, so of course... You know, be it's very common to have multiple iterations of the same character. You have Bounty Hunter Mando, which is like how we initially see him in like the very first episode, and then you have uh, a version of him when he dons the full Beskar armor. Uh, so that's that's that. He's been in that. He's he's okay. He's not a, like a uh, an A lister or anything, but uh, he gets the job done. And then you did mention Fortnite, but I'm. More, I'm I'm fairly confident he has made uh, he has been in Fortnite. I believe he, he was a skin. Yeah, he was, and it had Grogu in it, and yeah, and I brought that up, <sighs> pretending it had never happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a gamer, I. The one okay fortnite as a whole for the uh fan base it has and for what it is is a solid game especially now that they took all that building crap out of um, course i think it's a fun game to play the one thing i don't like about it is the fact that they use the skins from popular things to lure people into doing a you know spending their money i don't like that Mandalorian's popular, so of course when Spider-Man's in there, he's popular. Whatever character they have, like right now they have the Wu-Tang Clan in there. Everybody in their mom's who's a Wu-Tang fan that plays Fortnite is gonna buy the skins. Or the emotes or whatever the hell. 
And the same thing with Call of Duty. Snoop Dogg's in Call of Duty and everybody and their mama. It's, if you play Warzone now, it's all Snoop Dogg. You know oh, what I'm he's, saying? He's and then in when the they, game already? His, yeah, he's an operator. Oh, game. okay. I knew, I, I knew he that he was coming. He has the blunt and everything. He has little quips he says and stuff, little stuff he does. It's just Snoop Dogg stuff, which I'm, I don't have a problem with that. It's just I, I have an issue with these companies luring people into their wallets to buy unnecessary things to play a game. You don't need to be Snoop Dogg to win a game of Warzone. It's fun, but it gets over just like the rose skin that everybody was was um, purchasing because you can hide in the dark with their skin and camp. It's going to be something. Snoop Dogg's weapons are OP right now. The two that he, you know, the couple that he has are OP. A lot of people don't like them because of their trace arounds, but they're OP. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but as far as the Mandalorian, putting him in Fortnite. And I think it was after the first season of the show too that they did that. Yeah, I think I do it was after him. season one that they did that. Yeah, and I, I was that that bothered me because I'm like, okay, this show is fresh in our minds, and you're already selling out. Well, I mean, you're let's, already let's be asking fair. for money for 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 a skin. You know what I'm saying? This this is Disney. Let's we're talking it's about it. It's true. Here. That's yeah, and that's another reason why I kind of get rubbed the wrong way because how much more money do you need, bro? I'm just like. Nobody's topping Disney right now. They own no. everything. Everything. <laughs> so you don't need that money. But whatever. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. But um, because they already have the the board games. They have, like you say, he's in the the mobile game that you, that you play. Um, it's he's all over the place, man. I have Mandalorian on my freaking door in in, in my studio. So the Ma- Mando is popular. The character's popular. I love Boba Fett. That is my guy. Big time. So, Boba Fett and Mandalorian being in the same space at the same time was like a childhood dream to me. Um, because of the in the man and the thing that gets me too is that the Mandalorian as a character is not fair to people who are fans of the Star Wars universe because the Mandalorian is not a person. It's a a, 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 a group of people. It's a, a, what do you call it? A society. A yeah, like a culture. Species. <laughs> culture, thank you. Okay, there, there's a word, perfect word. It's a culture. <laughs> so if you have a game about the Mandalorian, it needs to be about all of them, not just that one character, if you're going to do it correctly. Like, Monster Hunter, for instance, how the, you were this one Monster Hunter, but it was a whole society of Monster Hunters all over these different planets and worlds doing the same thing that you did. This is just your story. You know, if they're going to do a game about the Mandalorian, it should be built not, and again, not trying to suggest it to be a good idea, but kind of like how they do War, how they did Warframe, how they did um, Destiny, where you can build your own Mandalorian. You know what I'm saying? You can have them be, um, what is it? The the new age Mandalorians that don't have a problem taking their helmets off or the ones that stick to the original creed of never taking your helmet off in front of anybody. Yeah. You know, the they're different weapons, Boba Fett style, you know, have a group of those, a group of the ones that's like Mando. It's just, you know, different species of Mandalorian that happen to have the same deal as Mando and be adopted from other planets and just happen to be brought up in the ways of the Mandalorian. I think that'll be a dope game, but not now, not in the next five years. Give me a minute. Let me digest what we got going on with him right now. Yeah, especially, well, if they do make a, a Mando MMO, as the rumor claimed, uh, it would probably take about five years to to yeah. master. So, you know, you may get the 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 breathing space you need for that but um yeah mandos being different species and all that that is definitely a thing that is in legends uh before it all got canned you know you have like um uh what's it called i, I can't name a specific in- instance because I, I didn't deep dig deep into legends like that but that is a thing that is documented uh, and I, I'm sure it's carried over in some capacity, or at least they will make it so, because um, there's a lot of speculation. Now, of course, nothing is confirmed because I don't think any details are out, but I think Mando Season 3 will basically, well, they they, they kind of have them wanting to be Mandalore now, right? 
Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure it'll be a very Mando-centric season three. Um, or, you know, putting your tinfoil hat on, you know, maybe we already got season three and they just called it Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, I was going to speak on that. But go ahead. Continue. Um, personally, uh, keeping with the M- Mando MMO, I think it would be a terrible idea to even make it an MMO. Um, as a lot of people in level one gaming, shout out to them, they the general consensus was that it should be an RPG instead, and I am a hundred percent agreeing with that because yeah, I agree with that. Twofold, number one being that I mean you could te- I guess kind of make it work as an mmo but then every single character would be mando and i mean Mm -hmm. that that never works so you would have to be like a either a side character supporting mando as an npc or something like that but uh it it just i don't think that would work so but as an rpg you can play as mando and you can have this whole little adventure i mean i guess they could do like uh something like a prequel to the show you know more yeah. akin to what he was supposed to be before he met Grogu and being an actual bounty hunter and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, I feel that if they went that route, they should give you a choice to go the, the Grogu route or not. And then you play along in the storyline with that decision. I can see that work. Um, although they would have to make basically two games. Well, if it's open world, this is also not necessarily. True. It's just the, the the missions would be different. Some of the missions will be the same because you just have Grogu tagging along with you. But you remember, even in the show, he would drop Grogu off with somebody to watch him and then go do his thing. So we'll just cut out that middle part of you having to find somebody to watch the baby. But if you happen to get Grogu, you have to go around and find a suitable babysitter for him before you do your mission. Yeah, do you, do you do you think people would get upset if they did do that, and say like um, in season one, right when he's going up against the Mythosaur, I think it was called, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Grogu yeah, saves him right. there, and yeah. if you were to go the non Bo uh, non Grogu route of your playthrough, do you think people like? I'm not saying he would die. Um, you know maybe he'd like Deus Ex Machina some other way out. But do you think it'd be like, oh man, I mean, our choices don't matter if he gets to walk away either way. I see your point. But again, so if he, okay, so say he survives, but because remember, after he survived that, he got his, um, uh, what's that, that, that badge that they get? Mm, their signet their signature so he got his insignia after that so he don't so if he doesn't have that he doesn't kill that creature he survives it but he doesn't kill that creature he doesn't receive that so his path is going to be different regardless yeah so uh he wouldn't be a true mando according to um the armor exactly i i never liked so he would have to earn that insignia a whole different way yeah, it could be like a um ooh, what if it didn't, like you just the story progresses, right? And then you you kind of fast forward to season 2 and he gets like a crate dragon as his insignia from uh exactly. Tatooine. No, the, exactly. that would a absolutely work. A different path. Although, and just uh, like with Boba Fett, him befriending becoming a member of the Sand People. You know what I'm saying that that cuz because Mando had a run in with them as well. Yeah, and they um they did galactic sign language. Exactly. So it's a number of ways he can get his insignia. It's a number. It's, it's you know it's it's endless. Just like how they oversaturate Grand Theft Auto Five with all this extra stuff to keep people interested in the game, and they have the online version, and they have the freaking modded servers you can do online with computers. It's it's if you're going to do it as a role playing game, as an RPG, it makes more sense because people have more ways of making the game their own. 
than if well, it was an MMO. Yeah. I, I think something that they absolutely should avoid is going the way of Fallen Order uh, and being a very linear game with not much deviation or personal choice. Yeah, exactly. Because that would... Because that, even that would Call of Duty did that in their later games. Your game progression would be different if you chose a different route on the map. If you did the zip line and went down and fought everybody, I think it was Black Ops 2. If you went down the zip line, the rest of the game was completely different than if you stayed up there and sniped. Oh, yeah, I remember but you, that. Yeah, but you have the choice to replay the game and choose the other choice to play the game to the other end. And then the endings of the game was completely different based on the decisions you made during the game. They have like seven different endings to that freaking game. Yeah, I do also remember this one particular scene like on the aircraft carrier where everyone like is drawing guns at each other. But depending on your choices, you can have like 20 different like instances of who's doing who or exactly. who's shooting who in that in that scene. Exactly. It, it was crazy. And they yeah. and they dropped that. They didn't really continue with that with that choice. Exactly. That made it made sense to do that. Even with Grand Theft Auto Five, you have a choice at the end of the game. I don't know if you played it to the end. I have. <clears throat> okay, so you have a choice to kill Trevor, kill Michael, don't kill either one of them, or kill them both. You can kill them both. I was told I haven't done it, but I was told you can. That's what I'm working on right now. Because um, I have never killed either one of them. I've always played it through. <clears throat> well. Um, I go with either Trevor or Michael and I don't kill the other one. I have it. I beat the game like six times, but I chose one of those choices. But when I found out that the game ends differently, if you kill Trevor or Michael, and I was told it was a way you can get, you can kill them both, but I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to try it and see. Yeah, I haven't tried that myself. I know um, the way I did it is just did the option C or whatever, which is to let them both live. And then just in yeah. the replay... Uh, go through each of the other alternatives just to get like the gold star or whatever for completion sake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see I if they both. I didn't think about doing it. it that way. I've always replayed the entire game over all the six times I've beat it. Oh wow! I mean, I think you've played it more <laughs> than I have. Yeah, I've played that since it's been out. I've because I, I started playing it on. I think it came out on 360 first. Yes. Yeah, so I played all three very well. I haven't played the the new one yet. Um, I, I refuse to buy it again. Oh, I, but I um, see that. yeah, so you know, I, I'm still playing the Xbox One version on my Series X. But you know, I, I, again, I can't see myself buying that game again. So this would be the third time I'm cool. I'll wait for six to come out if it ever does. Uh, well, they did confirm that they are working on it. So, yeah, but how long um, is that going to take? We've been oh, doing gosh. GTA 5 for what 12 years now, 11 years. It, yeah, well, them continuing to work on it is a stretch. They just kind of add new guns, new cars with every update and call it a day. I but, swear, I, I honestly, I kind of wish I would have bought the PC version to be able to get into those modded servers. That looks like so much freaking fun. The role playing that yeah. looks like so much freaking fun, bro. Yeah, we have someone at level one who who's really into that. Uh, really? I, yeah, I own a PC version as well. Uh, I got it like ninety percent off in a like a sale or whatever. But um, I, I wanted to try that as well. But then I was told by this person that uh, the rules are really strict. Yeah. And you know you you can't really deviate from their how they play. <laughs> you know you can't. <laughs> I, I saw I was get, I was shown a TikTok of um, two players pretending to be pigeons and riding a, a motorcycle, <laughs> and they got banned. I mean, yeah, it's because like I watch um, you know, Rasta La Vista is one of my favorite streamers, so I watch him on a regular, and he plays the online. But he has three different characters oh, that okay. he uses, and he has to back out the game and come back in in order to be those other characters and play those roles but you have to have a backstory you have to have a personality for that character a voice or you know what i'm saying it can't just be you being you and saying hey i'm gonna name my character johnny and we're gonna you know johnny has to have something about him besides your story your actual story you know what i'm saying it's actual acting it's like watching a freaking tv show bro it's so dope yeah my, my character would be johnny except he's not colorblind 
Oh, uh, non-colorblind Johnny. Yeah, uh, that'll See, be but fun. you should be colorblind Johnny. Call you a Johnny BW. What's that? Black and white. <laughs> a Johnny Gray. <laughs> Johnny Gray. I like Johnny that. Johnny Gray. Man. Yeah. Um, but uh, but to to rein us back in to the subject of, of uh, Star Wars, um, let's see. We have a lot of Star Wars games supposedly like on the horizon. You have yeah. Visions. Uh, there wow, is that series was amazing, man. No, no, wait, is it Visions? Um, Visions is a series, the uh, anime. Oh, yeah, of course. What am I thinking of? Uh, there was a they debuted it um, at one of like the game uh, shows, but uh, there's supposed to be that. Uh, there's supposed to be a like open world, like a different open world, like Jedi experience, I think. Uh, I forget the name. You know, we don't really do research here, but um, there's also I just saw uh, like last week, uh, someone. Uh, like a very Star Wars Eclipse. Eclipse. That's what it is. Yeah, it's coming out later on this year. Yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna have to see how that goes. Kotor is getting a remake. Let's not forget that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Star Wars coming on the horizon, and I don't know if an Emma, a Mando MMO uh, is truly going to succeed. Um, they have Star Wars Eclipse, Star Wars Hunters. Oh yeah, Hunters. That's Star MMO Wars again. Squadrons, and then the Fallen Order Two. Yeah. Fallen Order 2. I wonder how that's going to yeah. go. I never finished the first one, so I'm not really even impressed about it. I was kind of... I don't like <clears throat> when they add puzzles to an action game. That bothers me. Yeah. like You have to set um, stuff a certain way in order to make things happen and progress in the game. Once I got to that part where I think it was a boulder, you had to get the wind to blow a certain way. All oh, that bothered me so much. I, I don't like games. I just stopped playing. I haven't played the game since. When I got to that part, I was done. Yeah. Um, I watched people beat it, but I was still like, I, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. So I watched the, the uh, cause you know, with every game like that, they always have like those YouTube channels that do like the cutscene movies or whatever. Yeah. That's how I experienced Fallen Order. Besides watching our good friend Baron J67 stream it on Twitch all those years ago. Um, yeah. Bef- you know, it's a uh, they a have streamer. good people that do the which I think Baron it would have been a good idea for him being he played it so often but I I don't know if he has the patience to do a walkthrough videos uh, that's how I, I actually finished watching the game I mean watching Baron of course but I watched a guy play the game from beginning to end he did a whole like hour and a half walkthrough video yeah uh, the, the channels like that are very good as well they're helpful resources for anyone that seems to like be struggling on a particular area and stuff like that Um, but uh another uh star wars video game that just came out was the lego star wars uh what is it skywalker saga skywalker saga yeah before we jump into that i just saw something that popped up that said they're there oh never mind says no plans it would be amazing if they did a battlefront 3 I, that would, I would be, be cool. So, for that. so long as so Dyson that. went nowhere near it. Yeah. 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 Touche. Bring back, bring back <clears throat> Lucas Arts, right? Yeah. But to the Lego Star Wars game. Have you played it at all? I haven't played the new one. I've played the others, and I did enjoy them. Um, <clears throat> I did enjoy them. Um, they. They all have, they stick to the story for the most part of the movie. So it's pretty much like you playing the movie, but you can make other slightly, you know, different choices. But the end result is going to end the same as the movie did for the most part. Um, From my understanding with the Star, the Skywalker saga, it's supposed, it's not canon. So it kind of deviates from a lot of what we already know about the Skywalkers. Like they're supposed to do something different with Darth Vader. 
Yeah. And again, this is me reading articles and stuff on the game. I haven't played it, but reading articles and stuff on the game, they some people say they ruined Dark Vader's character. Other people say that they just went a different way with it. I'm interested into seeing what they do with it or what they did with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of the Lego games are I don't, well the later ones have been aimed more towards teens and adults. The original ones were aimed towards kids but like when I first played, I played my sons on the Wii U and I loved the freaking, the the Marvel games. Oh yeah. It was yeah. so fun. Those games for the Hobbit games, I played all the Hobbit games and Lord of the Rings. Those games are, but again, it's it's being that I'm a fan of the movies, the games were more interesting to play. Um, this Skywalker saga is supposed to be a different story all to get all together from my understanding. Yeah, you know, with when it, uh, the Lego games have a long history of being like humorous. You know, they don't strictly follow the the films and they'll do wacky stuff and you know kind of take drama out of the moments to be funny yeah and i i don't know if this is a hot take i i i feel like a lot of people are probably on board with this but just don't complain and truth be told i don't really care either way but i don't like the fact that they talk now yeah you know i grew I don't want to say grow up grew up with but I remember playing as a as a child the original Star Wars games uh, Lego Star Wars games so the um the the one that focused on the original trilogy the sequel uh the sequels no not, yeah. not sequels prequels the and prequels, yeah. the the sky what was it called complete saga the complete saga yeah was um new hope uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, I'm sorry, Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so I I played the those three. I didn't play like the like unique or solely sequel trilogy one. Or I've mm -hmm. and I've not gotten my hands on the Skywalker saga yet. I am not paying fifty dollars for a Lego game. I'm sorry, but exactly. um, it looks really it's promising. next gen though. It, it's next gen. <laughs> I will say it does look very nice. I mean, it being Lego is one thing, but you know, a lot of the scenery and stuff does look incredible. But they, you know why they're talking, right? It, it, why? So kids, because the, the humor isn't weren't kid. These kids aren't getting no. the new humor. Lego movie. Oh, they have to started? talk now. They can't. They have to talk now. They started doing TV shows first, and then they did the Lego movie. But you can't have a Lego anything now without it talking. Yeah, I like you know, I know like the Lego Batman is like the only other Lego game I've played, and this mm -hmm. was back on the PS2, I think. So it's been quite a while, but um, I remember they didn't talk, or did they? No, I don't they know, didn't. but. They had I, um, subtitles, I think. Oh, okay. Cause, I think they yeah, had subtitles. I always like that. Like, you know, they'd like point to like uh, like a poster and go, hur, hur, hur. you know? Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. It, it was, I thought it was funny, but I guess, you know, t modern audiences don't quite get the humor. Um, it's like the reverse of um, Back to the Future. You're going to like it, but your kids are going to hate it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you plan on picking it up on a sale at any point? Uh, I'm interested in seeing what the game is about. So yeah, I'm more than likely I will get it. Um, or borrow it from someone that I know that has an Xbox uh, Series X or you know a game sharer or whatnot. I'll end up playing it eventually. Yeah, when your son um, gets I would, it for his I birthday. I wouldn't. <laughs> exactly I wouldn't be surprised because you know uh, they did put all the other Star Wars Lego games on Game Pass at one time oh did they yeah they had the Star Wars games they had the Indiana Jones games they had I think the only ones I didn't I don't remember seeing is the Jurassic Park ones and the Lord of the Rings the, those but I, they had the Star Wars on there I know they had the 
original trilogy. I don't believe they had the prequels, but I know they had the original trilogy on there because I when I had my um first got my Xbox One, it was on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, first got my Game Pass. I'm sorry when they started the Game Pass. I I I'm just now remembering. I don't know how I remember it, but they also did Legos Clone Wars, which which followed yes. the uh, TV series. That was also yeah. one I played. Very good. They also did like those large scale battles, which I thought was actually pretty interesting for a Lego game. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Lego Star Wars, you know, eager to get my hands on it eventually. Hopefully they don't patch out like the Mando super glitch at the moment where um, (laughs) Django Fett can basically have like a death ray instead of a blaster. Um, But yeah, uh, that's Lego Star Wars. Um, something I wanted to get your thoughts on, and maybe we can wrap up after that, is, um, did you ever play, or at least hear of, the Star Wars MMO that came before, um, Star Wars The Old Republic, which is the current Star Wars MMO? Is it, it was a niche little title called Galaxies. Have you yes. ever heard or My played it? My brother played it. Yes, oh, okay. I've heard of it. My brother played it. See, I, I was doing I was doing a little digging yesterday, and uh, Baron J six seven, who I mentioned earlier, he sent me the link to an article he read. Uh, I think it was right as the game was shut down, and it was a journalist from PC Gamer who documented the like the final moments of uh, the game. So basically the devs had given basically everything to everyone and they got to just go crazy. It, it was almost as if like, you know, um, you know, you have like these reporters that kind of go overseas and stuff and then are like giving you a play by play of what's going on. It, it was almost like that, but you know, but <laughs> about a Star Wars video game. And I was thinking because um, even if it's not a Mando MMO coming out and again, that's not um, confirmed at all. Probably not even true in the first place. But just running with the assumption that it is true for for the sake of debate. Do you think a resurrected version of Galaxies would do well? Because, uh, as a bit of a refresher, Galaxies was almost like Second Life. Where, you know, you could build your own towns like as a community. You can run a store. You can go off and be a bounty hunter. Like it was very open with what you can do. Not not linear is the exact opposite of all aspects of that game. Uh, do you think that would work today? I do, um, mainly because of games like Ark, games like uh, Create Topia as a game that I'm playing. I played on Game Pass. Um, Minecraft. I think it would work. Um, people enjoy having that type of control in those type of games, and to do it in a Star Wars world nowadays would be uh, that would be a dope concept. A lot of people will fall will, will fall in line with that or be on board with that. Yeah, um, there is a like fan version like Star Wars Restoration or something, or Star Wars Galaxy and then hyphen restoration uh it's still yeah, going at it right now uh like it's you know they have i read not too long ago a like a road map for 2022 and then reflecting on things uh that went on in 2021 they're adding a whole new planet that was not in the base game so i, I they're really like taking um they're, they're from what i can see they're doing a very good job with it and you know this is just spitballing but if they were to ever bring back galaxies or anything like it i think um you know that team is would definitely be a good starting point obviously don't dmca and just take down everything that they've been working on for like the past however many years as some companies love to do um i think this is Microsoft, after all. Um, yeah. Oh, and actually, well, no, uh, it, it's not Microsoft. Scratch that. It's Disney. 
you know the other <laughs> the other giant <laughs> um i i could see them being lenient with that kind of thing and kind of rewarding fans although i mean maybe not in every instance but you know generally they're they're pretty chill um is there any uh, particular points of Star Wars interest you would like to to touch upon before we head out of here? Um, well, yeah, well, leading back to what you just said, I'm looking at it now. The Star Wars uh, Restoration Three. It's been out for seven months now. Well, this is as of January of this year, so they said they have big plans for 2022. So I'm gonna look into that definitely. Um, but the one thing I did want to talk about was them bringing more Jedi to the Mandalorian storyline. Oh, yeah. Um, we have pros and cons on why this is a good idea and a bad idea. So, um, I'm going to give you a few and my opinion, and then I want, I want to hear your opinion. So sure. Let's do it. So one um i think it's a good idea because it can broaden the star wars world or story and then my con is because it would take away focus from the mandalorian story itself yeah i can see that so do you agree or disagree with those two um i i would agree that it would definitely take away from mando i mean what it is now i should say because they already deviated what from what mando was supposed to be you know exactly you you remember the promo stuff it's like you know this you know legendary bounty hunter who's a mandalorian and you'll follow on his adventures and then you know three episodes in it's like oh we're we're, we're actually following the story of a part-time dad now yeah um, but if they want to deviate from the story that they created in a deviation uh it would probably not go well actually no I think it would probably su be super successful because we all saw how people just like the, the, their favorite parts of Boba were, were the Mando episodes where he wasn't even in his show. Oh my God. But um, <laughs> the, the spoilers for Book of Boba Fett, by the way, here, um, the episode where he's it's basically Luke and Grogu, you know, yeah. I, I think that would that would probably do well although i think they don't don't do what they did with boba because they don't want to put i would assume stuff that could go in this new ahsoka show into uh. boba uh into mando rather um i think if it comes to more jedi i think it would probably be better suited to ahsoka because um let's not forget that Ezra is said to be making a return from the Rebels TV show alongside really? uh, Thrawn. Yeah, because at the, I mean, Rebels is, I, I don't recommend watching Rebels. It's it's just, it's bad. But um, <laughs> the very end has Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra aboard the Chimera, which is Thrawn's Star Destroyer. And then they just get sent into hyperspace, and that's that. They just disappear for the rest of the, the, the story. Until now, uh, I believe the voice actor for Thrawn is going to portray him in live action. How that goes, I, I don't, I don't really know. You know, his, um, his face is really like tall and slender. Uh, Thrawn that is so how that translates to live action we'll, we'll see but it sounds like between Ahsoka and Ezra there's going to be a lot of Jedi stuff anyways uh, yeah. so it doesn't need to be in Mando but um, when it comes to uh, br branching out and stuff and adding to the lore uh, I'm all for that because uh, Ahsoka made it into one episode well one episode of Mando and now she gets her own show. Boba Fett, you know, he made a debut 
in uh, Mando season, was it season two? Season two, yeah. He yeah. was showed up at the end of season one, and then he was in the first episode of season two, I believe. Okay, yeah. Getting so, his armor back. Yeah. Um, so, and then he got his own show off of that. So, yeah. if they just want to use Mando, like the the series Mando, as like the the bre- like the crucible for new characters, and then then subsequently them getting their own spinoffs. I mean, mm-hmm. if that's what they want to use it for, then fine. But don't don't keep doing what they did with Ahsoka and Boba. Like, don't yeah. try to make them relevant to the to the core plot of Mando. Well, they're gonna have to cross reference and cameo all these characters and all these shows in order to make this world work. Because if you introduced Ahsoka in the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian is going to have to show up in her show, just like he showed up in Boba show. Hopefully they don't give him his own two episodes in the Ahsoka show like they did in Boba Fett. <laughs> they um, really did Boba dirty. Yeah, they did Boba real dirty. Um, but I think the Ahsoka show will work if they stick to her storyline. Yeah. If they deviate from it like they did with Mando, it's going to be a problem. If they deviate from it like they did with Boba Fett, it's going to be a problem. Because these are the characters that we fell in love with before the shows came out. True. Although, you know, I mean, in fairness, they shouldn't do it to Ahsoka, but I do think it'd be very fitting for her to do what she did uh, to, to Mando and just steal episodes. So I think yeah. it'd be poetic justice. Yeah. But I do but, get your um, point. But another um, pro is the fact which I think they're going to do in, ep- in season 3 is they're going to introduce Darth Maul okay or it's either in this or it's in one of the games it's something he's about to get introduced because this because again with the canon he died in the prequels and then he was a cyborg and he died again and he came back as more of a robot it's yeah it's a and whole then, lot and then he died proper yeah so that's one thing. If they did connect or create a Darth Maul connection, I think that would be that would be fun to watch. Um, but the one thing that I think that that them adding more Jedi to the whole situation, being that Luke is actually the last actual Jedi, because Ahsoka is not a Jedi; she's um, Force sensitive. <laughs> she's if you... uh, to borrow a. a... Well, not a term, but to borrow a title from Galaxy of Heroes, because they, they ran into this issue, too, trying to like label her with tags and mm-hmm. stuff. And so they created a whole new one called Una- Unaligned Force User. Oh. So, yeah, she's, okay. she's like in this gray, gray zone. Yeah. But that... Um... With that being said, I think that them adding more Jedi would eventually ruin um, it would create a connection between what's going on in those series and and Mando and the actual Star Wars story because this is in between the prequels and the New Hope. No, I'm sorry. This is after Return of the Jedi. I yeah, it's that. between the. So this is after Return of the Jedi before the new um, series that we will not mention because it doesn't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> so, but being that Luke is the last Jedi, for you to introduce more Jedi, you would have to have either Luke find them or you know Mando come across in some kind of way. But they're gonna have you're gonna have to connect them to Luke eventually, mm-hmm. and I think that would be end up getting Luke his own show or the Jedi's their own show in order to make it work. It's doing too much. So I don't think they should introduce any more Jedi into the series. Uh, on the on the subject of Jedi, I just want to get your opinion on this uh, fan theory. I don't prescribe to it, but I feel like you'll get a laugh at it. Uh, did you watch Bad Batch? Yes. So you know the character, Omega. Yes. Omega equals Ray's mom. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> yeah, I guess she eventually gets with, uh, uh, you know, Palpatine Jr. At some point. What? But again, the, the whole Ray being a Palpatine pisses me off when I found out that she was supposed to originally be a Kenobi. Yeah. It wouldn't make more sense for her to be Ray's mom with her getting with a Kenobi than it would for her getting with a Palpatine, even if he was good. Yeah. Just the history and the force being and her being the way she is or whatever, it makes more sense for her to be a Kenobi than a Palpatine to me. That whole last movie pissed me off. Absolutely. I now, was fine with Palpatine being a robot monster thing. But when they said that that was his granddaughter, I was hot. I was like, yeah, I'm cool on Star Wars for a minute. Yeah. I don't know how they could possibly make her a Kenobi since, you know, Obi-Wan was a very devout Jedi. He was not fast and loose with the rules. And so but again, the whole attachments things kind of kind of kind of Anakin. Anakin wasn't conceived naturally either. For real? But um, it, it's a little different because, you know, Obi-Wan is, is a guy. And I don't think the Force could act in such a way to create a son the, the same way Shmi could have. I think that if they... Because they never told the story of how... She was. It was the Manic the Manichlorian, Man Manichlorians, Manichlorians. What are they? Uh, Manichlorians. Manichlorians that got her pregnant. Once a Jedi dies, he becomes one with the Force. True. So if Obi Wan is one with the Force, it's possible for uh her to have uh, unnatural conception. <laughs> it's not gonna but it's again Ray is not him no no the many chlorians make up it's like our atoms or whatever they make up eventually who we are but the choice at the end of the day determines who we are yeah because so uh don't forget that Obi-Wan was one of the <clears throat> voices she heard exactly so he, he's still there he didn't disappear yet which doesn't really make sense either because, you know, he is like he leaves or like pieces out as a force ghost in Legends. But because, you know, he, he can only stay in the mortal plane so long before he has to just be with the force permanently. But I guess that's a, a point that's been thrown out. But again, with that being said, it would make sense that he's part of. She's part of his bloodline. If eventually he has to become one with the Force. Well, she was I'm all reaching. the Jedi. I know I'm reaching. I'm reaching. <laughs> she was a child of all the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, uh, on that fantastic note, uh, <laughs> how about we wrap up there for this episode? And we can always come back with uh, fresh, fresh takes next time. Yes. So, M Mr. Doja, my, my yes. good friend, w w tell you know, please tell the wonderful ladies and gentlemen where they they can find you in all of your stuff. Well, you can find me um, on all social media platforms under Mr. Doja. That's M I S T A. D O E S H A. Um, follow me on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, YouTube. Um, we actually are dropping a new video Monday uh, for oh. the song called Drink Up off of my latest album, The Book of Doja. Um, the Grim Reality, um, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube channel is where, where, where it will be premiering at. So you can catch all my latest videos on that channel, Grim Reality. Um, on YouTube again follow me if you listen to my music just follow me on all the social media sites follow me on um, Spotify you know have goals to meet people come on now help your boy out but, exactly um, 
Mr. Doja here is a good friend of mine, and I can wholeheartedly say that he deserves all of your support, so please do check him out. I will probably leave a link or two in the description below, so, you know, go click that as soon as the video is over. Yes, and I do appreciate you, Johnny Man. You've had my back since the day we connected, and I do appreciate you, sir. Big time. And I also appreciate the audience for sticking around and, and listening to us rant for about an hour uh so you know ladies and gentlemen be sure to hit like and subscribe because you know all of us youtubers need to beg for uh viewer interaction we'll be here be sure to leave a comment down below what you think about mando mmo or any of the other star wars games that we touched upon and uh what do you think it is omega Ray's mom for realsies you know let's have uh, a discussion down below yeah let us know what you think I, I want to see what you guys have to say about that definitely for sure but uh that's all for us for now until next time take care later <laughs>